Uh, yes, I'm Norm, and I'm here to talk about functional programming without the functions. I was doing silly things before Andre said it was cool. <laughs> so, oops. Oh, I'm going backwards. That's the problem. It's a common problem when you're my age. The big button, yes. That makes sense. Okay, so a few years ago, I started wrestling with a number of problems in our code base, which need not concern us here. And the result was I came up with a framework for uh, defining and executing uh, code. Uh, and it has worked fantastically well, uh, unbelievably well. We've done a second project, a Greenfields project in it, and that's been fantastically successful. There's a second developer working in it now. It feels like a new programming paradigm. And that's not, of course, what I set out to build, but that's what it's seeming like. So, for lack of a better term at this point, I'm calling it value-oriented programming, or Valor. And um, the, it, it actually does quite a bit of what the people who are talking about data-oriented design are talking about. It actually implements it as a programming paradigm. Uh, but when you actually work in it, the flavor of it is more like FP, f uh, functional programming, than anything else. And that's extremely ironic, because the central idea of this paradigm is to remove functions from the central role in organizing our code. And that's kind of paradoxical. Um, I can't even give you an overview of this, obviously, but uh, there have been th about three or four times in the course of doing this when I've just sort of come over a hill and I've gasped at some amazing realization. And I'm going to share one of those with you tonight. To do that, I have to share a simple example. It's such a simple example that you would never use such an overblown framework to, uh, to do, do it, but that's the nature of you know, slide-type presentation stuff. So let's suppose that we're calculating uh, for a variety of months the uh, state um, uh, sales tax that's due. So I've drawn a little diagram here of the basic inputs to this calculation. Anybody that's ever had to file for this knows this. And um, it's not a tricky computation, but there they are. Now, if we're going to obtain tax due for month M with a function, uh, it's going to look something like this. I mean, we can, there are variations on this theme, but basically it's going to look something along these lines. The inputs to the calculation will be passed into the function as parameters, most likely. Uh, if you don't do that, probably you're doing something wrong. And uh, in Valor, what we do is we have an object called a value factory, and this is not an array, nor is it a, uh, these have nothing to do with arrays, what you're seeing here. It's a radically new notation. Uh, we have a value factory, and tax due sub m is not a value. It is a name of a value. That value has been defined to the value factory so that the value factory knows its type, it knows how to calculate that value, which is actually a fairly complicated multi-stage kind of pipeline. Most importantly, it knows all of the other named values that are used in that calculation or in the process of choosing the way of doing that calculation. Uh, that turns out to be quite a significant feature. Now, what I'd like to talk about now is go back to these two examples, and we're going to talk about caching. Uh, why do we do caching? Well, there are correctness benefits to caching because essentially it, it implements immutability, which we all know is a very good thing. And uh, you can see a connection to FP there. But we mostly do caching for performance benefits. And we tend to think of caching in terms of eliminating machine cycles and reducing the order of complexity of a given level of a, an algorithm so that obviously that benefit filters up the stack. Uh, so with a function, the classic way to do this, like if you use generalized memoization, is inside the function, we're going to maintain a, some sort of, uh, uh, it could be a hash table, some kind of map of the values for which we've already performed the calculation. We look those values up, we see, aha, we've done this already, so we return that value without calculating again. We've, we've saved the machine cycles. In Valor, uh, what we do is we, the only actual piece of data that's going into this expression is M, the month. Uh, this, the the uh, factory is actually saying, do I need to calculate this 
without accessing any of the inputs. So we're doing caching to avoid memory uh, cache misses. Thank you.